Hello viewers, welcome to I'm the Bad Guy, a presentation on navigating system spaces as villain or other gray morality fictives. We are the Lunestis Collective, a 30-something year old adaptive and protogenic system with DID. We have a large system comprised mostly of fictives, and due to life circumstances, we've ended up with a lot of antagonistic fictives. Um, we've been a system since birth and part of the community since the late 90s and early 2000s. In that time, we've noticed a negative shift in community attitude towards fictives, especially fictives who aren't sweet cinnamon rolls or shining heroes. We wanted to create this presentation because we feel that fictives who are villains in their source materials are often treated poorly by singlets, other systems, and sometimes even by their own system. Um, let's start off by defining some of the terms we'll be using in the presentation. Fictives are a type of system member, sometimes along with factives, called introjects. Um, fictives identify as figures from media that is considered fictional here, such as books, video games, movies, web comics, and similar. Um, sometimes they're specific people, or just from that universe without being somebody that's canonical. Fictives might see themselves as actually that person, or simply modeled after them. Fictives may closely resemble their source, or be quite different. Some see it as purely a psychological thing, some see it as a spiritual or multiverse thing, Fictives are very common in systems of any origin and any diagnostic status. A source can be a few different things. It may be the source character a fictive comes from, the world itself in general, or a specific timeline in that universe. Um, for example, a fictive may say that their source is Steven Universe. That might mean the series, Steven Universe, that could be Steven himself, or, you know, themselves. Um, canon and non-canon, in the context of fictives, are terms indicating how closely a fictive does or doesn't resemble their source character or relate to the source world's events. Again, using Steven Universe as an example, a Steven fictive may consider themselves non-canon if they say, turned evil, were a different gender or sexuality, or just remember events happening differently for them. In this presentation, we want to talk directly to fictives who were villains or other gray morality types in their sources, and the prejudice they can face just from existing. The term we will be using from here will be antagonistic fictive, since it's a more neutral and inclusive term. If you're a system with an antagonistic fictive, or a system or singlet who knows an antagonist fictive, feel free to listen and maybe gain some insight on how it can feel. Uh, maybe even some things to do or to avoid. Fictives are often judged by their source, for better or worse. This is especially true for fictives who were considered evil or problematic. It can be a frightening, frustrating, and isolating experience to be an antagonist fictive. Hopefully we can help offer some tips for dealing with internal struggles, in-system conflicts, conflicts with other systems, and potential assumptions made by singlets. Being new to a system, regardless of your system's origins, can be a difficult experience. And whether you, the system member, come from splitting, or you were willed into existence, or channeled here, uh, whether you came from another world, whatever you believe, or whatever happened, um, being a fictive can be an especially hard adjustment. Being a figure or coming from a world that is considered fictional in this world puts system members in a position where they have to justify their existence, fight for recognition, and deal with toxic behaviors a lot more than non-fictive members typically experience. 
there are people out there who insist that fictives are super rare and if they exist at all uh when that's not true at all fictives are quite common it's not unusual for some systems to have many fictives or even be mostly fictives on top of having to argue their existence more often than non-fictive members have to Fictives often have additional problems with feeling real, reconciling their emotions and memories from their source media, figuring out how to handle fandom, and sometimes arguing with singlets and even other systems that they aren't always like their source. While all fictives have these struggles, antagonist fictives tend to experience it all much more intensely. For non-canon fictives who believe they come from a world that really existed, it can be painful to be accused of something they didn't do, that was beyond their control, or was very different from what people assume happened. Even for fictives close to canon, it was another world and another time. Having that all put on your shoulders here in this world can be exhausting and traumatizing. For fictives who are purely psychological in origin, who are modeled after antagonist fictives, the sting can be worse. They truly did nothing wrong. It's a lot to try and bear. There are ways to make it less stressful, however. Um, if you're a newly arrived fictive whose source is an antagonist, it can be difficult to figure out what's going on, how to handle being here, being within a system, and dealing with folks outside the system. While it depends on circumstances, often the most immediate concern is getting yourself situated within your system. Well, what does that look like? Well, first of all, learning about systems and how is yours functions is important. Fear, anger, and confusion are common emotions to have when you, you know, quote, quote wake up here. It's important to acknowledge these feelings, and it's important to try to resist letting those emotions dictate how you interact with other system members. Often systems will have at least one person who is willing to show newcomers the basics. It's vital to try and at least play nice with them, to get orientated even if you might not be inclined to. Um, this is solid advice even if you're not new. Finding at least one system member who is an ally and can help you make sense of things is important. It's quite possible the system will already have another antagonist fictive, and they might be a good bet for support and help. Most systems will have a general set of rules they expect system members to follow. Often this is for the safety of the entire system, of which you are now a part of, what impacts the outworld body and the system in general will impact you. Rules might include how to interact with people outside the system, basic outlines for how to treat fellow system members, people who can be contacted if you need help or can contact other system members, etc. If your system doesn't have a set of rules, it's still important to figure out what behavior is expected of you. Your system and fellow system members will be your best support and armor in navigating life. You want to treat them as preciously as you would yourself, or more so if you've got a lot of self-hatred to work through. Um, similarly, the system as a whole may have a lot of outworld things that are good for newcomers to know about. Routines like work, school and hygiene, if the system is out as a system and who, potentially difficult family situation, bills to pay, pets to care for, medical conditions, and what's needed to be done to take care of the body's health, medication, doctor's appointments, therapy. It can be overwhelming, especially if you're used to just taking care of yourself, having a greater access to money, or you were strong in ways that the body might not be. If you had superpowers before, it might feel wrong to no longer have access to those. Again, it's important to make sure that you do what you can to care for the body and the system if you're called on to do so. Many fictives, when they enter their system, have memories from their source media, whether it's because those memories are programmed in or because they really happened, it can affect you the same. Those memories might match the canon source or they might be nearly completely different. 
you're not a carbon copy of the person in your source either way. There's bound to be slight differences, even if most remains the same. Sometimes things are different enough that it's like, well, I might as well be a different person. Either is okay, you're still you. Um, for antagonist fictives, memories are often unpleasant. Memories of abuse, loss, war, death, and more aren't uncommon, either as the victim, as the perpetrator, or both. This can be hard to deal with, as often there are feelings of guilt, regret, and shame attached to those memories. Even when there's not, there may still be feelings of anxiety stemming from a concern that the system as a whole will be judged because of one's existence. For antagonist fictives, even if you are non-canon and remember completely different things, or you've changed since then, or you don't really feel remorse but don't plan on going back to those behaviors, it can often feel not good enough because people outside the system may still treat you or your entire system poorly just because you're there. So outsider judgment aside for the moment, part of the settling in process may have to do with dealing with those memories. Maybe you have overall pleasant memories. It can happen. If so, that's great. But maybe you have upsetting or violent memories. Maybe you remember doing or saying terrible things or having those things happen to you. First of all, it's important to hold on to the fact that anything that you remember happening before does not have to happen here. This world isn't your source. You're not beholden to what happened there. This world is a clean slate and a chance to start over regardless of how you feel about your memories. All you can do is impact the here and now and build a new future, which yeah, can be both scary and exciting. But it's worthwhile to look at what you have here or want to have here and make constructive goals. Secondly, if you do feel badly about things you remember, it can be worthwhile to simply write it all down. What you remember, how you feel about it, sit with it. While it's good to focus on the present and the future, sometimes people do need to reflect on the past first, and that's okay too. Some people seek closure or want some sort of forgiveness, either from others or from themselves. And often that comes from finding ways to get it out of your head and down on paper. It's something you can hold at, look at, reference, and even destroy if you even feel like it'd be therapeutic to do so. If writing isn't your style, sometimes art like drawing or painting can work. Sometimes exploring through fictional writing poetry or music are preferable. Even if it's just making playlists of angry, sad, or whatever songs. For us, we'll sometimes write down our memories and pass them off as, you know, quote, quote, fan fiction, because it can make it easier to have that distance while sorting through it. Either way, you don't have to keep it in. You deserve to be able to work through those memories and emotions, regardless of what they are, and regardless of if it was your fault or not. When it comes to memories, it's okay to look into mental health resources that deal with grief, PTSD, and specific therapeutic techniques that are targeted towards people who have had bad things happen in their past. Regardless of your beliefs of how you formed as a system member or how your memories formed at all, if it's impacting you here and now, then it's very much okay to use tools that help people who had upsetting experiences in this world. Like if you're having a trauma reaction to the memory of a loved one being killed, or even yourself being hurt or killed, then yes, you can use tips and tricks often used by people who live with PTSD. Whatever helps you come to terms with what you're remembering as long as you're not harming anyone else, is okay. We will personally look up CBT, DBT, and EMDR exercises or worksheets sometimes to see if anything there can help specific system members here. Um, for example, we have a fictive here who had ASPD or antisocial personality disorder in his source material 
he came here with some fairly traumatic memories and worries that he'd hurt people here. We use some techniques like reframing to help him come to terms with his worries, and overall he's made a good life for himself in our system. If your system has a therapist, even if you're not out to them as plural, you can still get help in a more roundabout way. Guilt, grief, anger, or wanting to improve certain things in your life, like say intrusive thoughts or developing better people skills, aren't anything you need to come out with, you know, to get help with. Most therapists, if you say something like, hey, sometimes I feel the urge to punch people when I get angry, or how do you cope with loss, will help you find ways to deal with that without needing to know specifics. If you don't have a therapist, there are hotlines, mental health text chats, and forums that can help with those topics too. Lastly, what if you don't feel bad at all about any of it? Maybe you just did what you did, you were who you were, and you don't feel any great need to think about it much or reflect. You don't even have to punish yourself or feel shame over your memories. It's not going to do any good. It doesn't change the past. And sincerely, you don't have to water down who you are to be accepted here. You don't have to try and make yourself into something you're not. Most system members and many people outside the system will accept you as you are, even if you don't give a single heck about anything. For the most part, as long as you're not causing harm here, you'll be fine. But maybe you're sitting there going, but TLC, I don't remember anything. Well, that's okay too. Not all fictives come to a system with memories. Some just don't have any and never do. Some fictives aren't canonical at all and might not have a lot of things within their canon source to trigger their memories. Some gain them over time. Some come in with one set of memories, usually canonical memories, but as they spend time here, come to realize they were more like placeholder memories or were built off what the system as a whole felt like the victim, you know, quote, quote, should remember. It's all okay. It's all normal. It doesn't mean anything was fake. It just means that all fictives are different and some fictives will gain new information about themselves as they adjust to being here. Well, others know their entire history from the minute they arrive. Neither is more legit than the other. If you feel like you should have memories, but don't, or suspect that the memories you have are incomplete or skewed by canon sources, there are things you can do. One, you can wait. Give yourself time. Um, and that's probably the best thing you can do for just about any problem within a system. A lot of younger or newer systems these days are impatient and seem to think that if they don't have everything figured out in a year, or even within a few months, they're somehow failing? No, 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 no. It can take years to figure things out. We have fictives here who have taken nearly 10 years to fully understand themselves. I mean, think about it, singlets usually have to go their whole lives trying to figure out who they are. You as a system and as a system member don't have to have things figured out, you know, in just like a few days. Um, it's especially hard as an antagonist fictive where you might not want to remember anything or you're scared of what you'll find. Again, you can use writing, regardless of whether you are a figure in canon source or not. It can often help to go over the source and make notes of what feels familiar, what feels right or wrong, that sort of thing. Once you have an idea of what seems accurate for you or wrong for you, you can take the time figuring out the rest. Um, you know, thirdly, some people will use guided meditation or past life regression techniques. While it's not the same exact thing, of course, it can help you relax, focus, and possibly tap into memories you're repressing. Memories might not be an immediate concern when you come into a system, and if not, that's okay. Put it on the back burner for a later time. 
In our experience, when fictas arrive in their system, it does tend to be when a set of traits, an event, or a specific memory trigger that fictive into forming. And because those memories can be upset upsetting to either you or your system, it's worth having some ideas on how to deal with them in case they are an immediate concern. Um, the pure shock of being here, sharing a body with others, and maybe having intense memories to deal with, all combine to make for a potentially explosive situation. A lot of antagonist fictives in our experience have a strong self-preservation instinct, which is a fantastic thing, but sometimes it can result in lashing out, shutting down, or destructive behaviors in individuals who possibly never learned how to operate otherwise. This isn't a trait exclusive to antagonistic fictives. Fictives who were heroes in their sources can be just as destructive. But often, antagonist fictives have a lot of suppressed trauma, a lack of socialization, that sort of thing. So it's important for the system as a whole to have patience and try to extend compassion, willingness to help, and understanding if someone might have negative reactions to being in a system. It's also important for you, the fictive in question, to acknowledge any negative reactions they might have and try to cope with it in a constructive manner. This isn't always possible, and that's okay. Sincere effort is what matters. The rest is a learning curve that all system members have to go through. If things all get overwhelming, finding ways to calm yourself, ground, or distract yourself will be vital. What that will look like depends on your system, and what is physically, mentally, or financially possible, and your own interests. Art is always the first thing that comes to mind for us. Painting, drawing, sculpting, wood carving, photography. Other things like listening to music, making playlists, making videos playing with pets, going for a walk, playing video games, uh, watching cute or funny animal videos, cooking or baking, working on crossword puzzles, going window shopping, or actually shopping if it won't harm the system to spend that money, for things that you might like. Making a mood board or aesthetic board on Pinterest, or by using photo editing software, practicing an instrument, if your system has one. Gardening, even just going out and sitting in nature can be beneficial if it's safe for you to do so. Sometimes, if possible, physical things like martial arts, boxing, horseback riding, swimming, dance, or similar things can help get nervous energy out. It may also be worth looking into grounding exercises, such as the 5-4-3-2-1 technique, and breathing exercises, which are free and often simple to do, and can be done at the first sign of being overwhelmed. These things can also be good for if you have unpleasant or violent urges that you want to find an outlet for. Finding a hobby that's harmless and feels fulfilling for you as an individual can be immensely helpful. It's important to remember that the first person you have to live with is yourself. So while you're getting used to being in a system, sharing a body and everything that comes with basically starting a new life, please be gentle with yourself. Yeah, it's important to try and at least be civil with your system mates. Yeah, it's important to try and be mindful of your emotions if you struggle with them. But you're a person, you have good aspects and flaws. You're probably going to make mistakes. That's okay. The things we've suggested, we suggest to make things easier for you. Because regardless of who you are, or what you maybe did back home, you deserve to have as smooth a transition into system life as possible. It's hard enough to be new to a system, or adjusting to being in a system at all, without being your own worst enemy. But, perhaps you've already adjusted to being in a system. Or you have a handle on being new, but you're struggling with the system itself, or other system members. Once the immediate concerns are out of the way, or are being worked on, 
there may be concerns with day-to-day -day functioning within the system itself. One of the first tricks to being in a system can be, but isn't always, learning how to front. Some systems never really switch runners. Some system members don't desire to front. Both of those are okay. But if you're in a system that can switch and want to front, it can get tricky. A lot of the tips we gave can be used by a system member, regardless of whether or not they're running. Systems often have an in-world where you can do things, or maybe you can co-front with someone who can work with you on those things if you can't reach front directly. It's perfectly normal for it to take years to learn how to enter and exit front at will. So if you don't have it figured out, that's okay, and it's no one's fault. In our experience, many antagonist fictives have a harder time sharing the body at first, either because it's difficult or even frightening to give up control, or out of sense of being able to run things better. Um, sometimes it can be because they finally feel free. They can also be reasons for why it's difficult to front. Usually it's not out of malice. Fictives, including so-called problematic fictives, are people with likes, dislikes, dreams, worries, and fears, just like any other system member. Difficulty sharing front, or fronting at all, is something to work on together as a group. Blaming and shaming doesn't benefit anyone. If you're having a hard time leaving front, or a hard time wanting to front, um, it's worthwhile to explore why and to talk out with someone, there's often a reason why the system wants or needs a specific system member to front or to leave front, even if you might not understand why. Caring for the body and keeping to routine during your time in front goes a long way towards building trust within a system, which is an essential when times get tough. Even if your system can't control switches and you had no say in being put into front or being pulled out of front, trying to have a good attitude about it is important. If you're not used to teamwork, if you're used to being on your own or doing your own thing without limits, it can be rough. Still, when you exist as a fictive that might have a hard time out there in the world, there will be times when you'll want your system to have your back. Whatever you remember life being like before, for better or worse, things here are different. Maybe you're having a problem where you're interested in fronting, but your system is scared of you, doesn't trust you, or is worried what outsiders will think. This can be very frustrating. It's just a sad fact that your reputation will precede you people will assume things about you or act like they know you. There will be people who will be uncomfortable engaging with you, even if they don't know you beyond your source at all. Unfortunately, systems don't always have faith in their system members. And if you're a fictive who was known canonically for being aggressive, difficult, violent, or worse, it can be hard sometimes to convince your fellow system mates to relax around you and give you a chance. Regardless of whether or not you're true to your canon source, it can be disheartening to come to a new world and feel like you're already being judged before people actually know you as a person and not just what they saw on screen. One thing you can do right off the bat is to make it clear that you don't intend to harm them or their loved ones. Most of the time, people are just scared that having an antagonist fictive means that the fictive is going to be dangerous or harmful. They just want a little reassurance. You don't have to be a so-called good version. You don't have to be on your best behavior or sever yourself from your source. We're not saying you need to beg for forgiveness, regret what you did, or anything like that. It's just a matter of realizing that people might have preconceived notions or fears and not feeding into that if possible, because in the end, it really doesn't help you if your system is afraid of you. It doesn't help you if you engage in behavior here that could get you or the system in trouble. 
And you might not feel any urge at all to do anything like that. You might not do anything at all and your system is still treating you unfairly. Maybe you're just a more abrasive person or blunt or withdrawn. Maybe you're just a person who is trying to do your best and messed up. Or you just oppose the protagonist for whatever reason. Or the protagonist was genuinely a jerk and you were only an antagonist because they were canonically the central figure. Either way, if you can't convey to your system that you're not a threat to them, the system itself, or the outworld life the system has established, this is where it helps to have established connections with specific system members or people outside the system. Let them help advocate for you. Your system will be your support structure here for better or worse. They can be friends, family, lovers, work partners. It will be in your absolute best interest to prove to them that you can be trusted. And that can take time. But if they're refusing to even try and work with you, and it's been some time without any improvement or is getting worse, you might need help in getting people to see a reason. Sometimes systems do repress system members unfairly, and having people who are willing to step in and go, hey, this isn't okay, is a blessing. Sometimes it's nothing to do with you specifically, and there's concerns that people outside the system will judge the system because of your presence. This can even be more irritating because it's not about you at all in the end, but a system's internalized shame. Again, often this will improve in time as your system gets to know you and relax a bit. It's important to know that it's not really your fault. The outside world can be challenging. Even other systems can be judgmental sometimes. And there's this attitude among some singlets and some systems that the type of fictives that a system gets, quote, says something about that system. So some systems, when they pick up antagonist fictives, worry that others will think their system is somehow bad, violent, dangerous, or any number of things. Flat out, this is untrue. There should never be a moral judgment about a system for having antagonist fictives. There are many reasons why it can happen, including that some systems may have grown up in situations where they felt trapped or demonized, and having antagonist fictives grants them some feeling of freedom, strength, and the ability to overcome those feelings. Villains in fiction are often transgressive figures, and that can be appealing to systems who feel outcast. And sometimes it just happens without any deeper meaning. It doesn't necessarily have to be a manifestation of some collective trauma. Regardless, your presence doesn't point to any moral failure on the part of your system. Your existence does not justify people treating your system abusively. Speaking from personal experience, we've been harassed for the fictives that we have here. We've had people manipulate us, pretend to be friendly, but then talk trash behind our back, literally leave spaces that we've entered before we've even said a word. We've been threatened. And why? Because we have a lot of antagonist fictives here and because people make really awful assumptions or judge us based on our sources. We know how much it hurts and how isolating it can be. We try hard to be good people. And we know that most of you listening right now try hard to do your best, regardless of your source, or even regardless of how you were when you came into the system. People change. People learn how to get along. It hurts when your own system reacts to you with shame, fear, or trying to hide you away. Maybe some of you listening are currently trying to grow and improve, and it's a struggle. You deserve support. You deserve to be treated as more than just a manifestation of trauma or as a problem. You deserve to be treated as more than an inconvenience or as a sign that something is wrong with your system. Reach out to people, form connections. The deck is already stacked against you from the start and it's unfair. People are going to expect you to be awful. Yeah, sometimes even your own system members that's unfair too, but there is support out there and there are people who will understand. If your system is treating you with shame and acting scared of letting others know that you exist, 
maybe even trying to prevent you from fronting, try to talk to them about it. Explore common ground. It can be useful. Sometimes people just need to be reminded that, hey, you're a person too, like them. Sometimes a system will put antagonist victims on this weird anti-pedestal in a way, where like you're not really a person anymore, but a figurehead for things they're scared of or worry about. And I know some of you listening might be like, okay, but that's almost flattering. Except when there comes a point where you need to be treated like a person and need to be taken seriously and need the cooperation of your system, that might not be there because they've made an archetype of you. Side note, this is one reason why as a system with roles, speaking to other systems with roles, we strongly advocate against slapping antagonist victims with the persecutor label straight out of the gate. Let people tell you and show you who they are. Don't decide it for them just because they might be scary. Other things you can do is to see if you can negotiate with your system to let you front when the system is alone. When we were younger and more worried about these kind of things, we'd often let our more so-called problematic fictives front for bedtime. Even if you're sharing that space with someone outside your system, it's often a quieter time where you can maybe get a snack, watch some videos, or listen to music, get the body ready for sleep, and just have some time to think. It's low stakes, and it gives you a chance to show the system that you're not so scary. Other times that might be ideal for fronting are around non-judgmental system friends, or if there's something the system needs to do, but is struggling to do, offering to handle it for them. For example, folding the laundry, or studying for a quiz, or taking a shift at work, or going to a doctor appointment. Basically, you're trying to establish goodwill, so hopefully they'll calm down a bit. If the system has someone who acts as an in-system therapist or is more of a mediator type, you could talk to them and see if they can facilitate positive change. As we said before, sometimes it helps to have at least one system member who is friendly to you and can help build bridges with the rest of the system. Systemates who are more inclined to be neutral or are great at communication and resolving disputes are good people to turn to if your system isn't treating you right. Perhaps though the problem isn't your system as a whole but a specific system member the sometimes unfortunate reality of being an antagonistic fictive is that other fictives from your source can end up in the system as well so what do you do if you're in a system and one of your source mates is there and has someone who opposed you or someone you hurt if you feel remorse about what happened share that with them they might not forgive you and that's their right But sometimes just saying, hey, I'm sorry for what happened, it won't happen again, can go a long way. Give them the time and space to process your presence. If you don't feel any sort of remorse for how things went down, and again, you don't need to, all you can really do is be honest with how you feel and respect their boundaries. If there were actions you did that would hurt them, the system, or outsiders, Make an effort not to engage in that behavior. Maybe things will never be buddy-buddy between you two, but it's very possible to at least reach civility. Sometimes that's the best you can hope for, and that's not a bad thing. A lot of times, even in systems where two or more cismates dislike each other, they'll still make sure to have each other's backs. And in the end, that's what's important, working together and defending each other if needed. And as we've said before, maybe it's not even about you specifically. One of the wonderful, wild, confusing things about being effective is that there may be other versions of your source out there, sometimes called doubles. It's possible that a sysmeet's negative reaction to you could be because of another version of your source, and that version upset them. No, it's not fair. Being treated with suspicion because of something someone else did doesn't feel great. But as with uh, the other instances, time and patience will help. You are your own person, and usually system members know that. But it can take time for people to move on beyond their knee-jerk reactions. On the other side of that coin, what if there's a system member there who you remember hurting you? 
It's okay for you to have boundaries. It's okay for you to express worry, sadness, anger, and hurt. Some people seem to think that antagonist fictives should just exist in this constant state of apologizing for everything and have no right to feel upset about things they went through. That's not true. Just how it's perfectly acceptable for source mates you hurt to air their grievances, it's acceptable for you to talk about a source mate hurting you. This goes for memories you may have, too. You're allowed to talk about things that upset you. You're allowed to express any trauma you might have and seek healing. Similarly, you're allowed to be happy, too. That's just something we want to mention in all of this. While adjusting to being in a system can be scary, stressful, and complicated, while learning to live with cismates and possibly source mates can have challenges, you're allowed to have good times, too. Even if it's just taking a walk on a nice day, jamming to a favorite song, playing with a pet, reading, watching, or playing something fun, having a favorite snack, or spending time with someone you like, it's good and it's okay to have those moments. Regardless of who you were, like we've said, this is a new life and world. It's okay to seek peace and happiness. Unfortunately, there may be people outside your system who disagree with that. So in addition to getting your bearings within a system and learning how to live with yourself and your fellow system members, you also have to learn how to deal with people outside your system who may judge you for your source. Like we've said, we've been there. It's awful and no one deserves to go through that. Most of your system's friends will be or should be understanding. And luckily many of the systems your system meets will also likely be understanding, but there will inevitably be at least one outworld friend or one stranger who will treat you poorly for existing. They might be singlets or they could be other systems. Just because systems should know better doesn't mean they will. Like your own system, maybe they had a bad experience with a version of your source. Maybe they assume that because your source was a bad guy, it means you're inherently dangerous, or they think you can't possibly be who you say you are because, well, so-and-so wouldn't act that way. Maybe they're fans of your source material and need to learn to separate you from canon or from their fan theories. When it's your own system mates thinking this way, you can more readily express your thoughts, feelings, memories, and intentions with them. When it's people outside the system, especially strangers, it's harder. You know your truth. Your system as a whole probably does, but outsiders don't. If they're a friend of the system, give them time, talk to them about it, and try to come to an understanding. They might be inherently more suspicious because they can't see into your head, but they likely will realize in time that you're just another system member. As with your sysmates, it can be good to find one outworld friend who is willing to talk to you and who accepts you. Everyone needs support in system and outside of the system. Plus, if you have at least one friend who is willing to give you a chance and gets to know you, it might show more skeptical friends that you are, in fact, okay to be around. You might have to be especially patient if this friend is a singlet. Most singlets, no matter how good they are about listening to systems, get a little weird around fictives. It's a concept they have to get used to, and for antagonist fictives, even more so. A lot of singlets just don't understand, quote, how that happens. And much like how some system members repress antagonist fictives out of fear of judgment, some singlets will shut down around you or act uncomfortable to the point you don't want to front around them. Sadly, there's a reason why a lot of systems will try and hide some fictives. Perhaps it would help to get another system mate that the friend is more comfortable with to talk about it. You could also confront them yourself. If they're not really feeling it, it's important to respect their boundaries, you know, even if it sucks. And that's an important thing in all this. Regardless of how hurtful it is, regardless of how annoying or angering it can be, if someone doesn't want to interact with you, respect that. If you come across some DNI list involving your source, respect that. You're allowed to feel hurt, 
But if someone is uncomfortable with you, whether it's founded or not, or some other version of you or not, then there's no point in forcing that. You can try and talk it over if the person is important to your system, but aside from that, there's no point. There are other people out there who will want to talk to you and who will be understanding. Find those people. Focus on them. But here's the thing. Say you've tried to get along with someone, but they still treat you poorly. What then? You also get to determine what is comfortable for you. You also get to determine who you want or don't want to interact with you. So if someone is treating you poorly, you have every right to mute them, block them, ignore them, and otherwise remove them from your space. Obviously, if the person is a friend of the whole system or someone your system must interact with, that's harder. But if they're a stranger, you are not obligated to put up with people's garbage. If people make rude assumptions about you or are treating you badly just for having the audacity to exist, you're allowed to cut them out of your life. Even if they're a friend of the system, it's worth talking with your systemates about. With that kind of treatment, your system as a whole deserves better friends than that. Boundaries aren't just for other people. You're allowed to have them too, and people treating you like trash should definitely be a boundary. Regardless of your source or how things went for you personally, you don't deserve to get treated badly. You don't deserve to be abused, harassed, or given the cold shoulder just for existing. Some people seem to think that if you're an antagonist fictive, you have to let people steamroll you or treat you like garbage, but that's not true. So if you try your best, but someone is still cruel to you, protect yourself. We don't advocate being mean back, but just use whatever tools you have to cut off access and then move on. That advice is more for antagonist fictives who intend to be out about who they are. Maybe you don't want to even be out about who you are. Maybe you hate your source and want to try and start completely over. That's okay too. If you want to change the name you use or anything else about yourself, that's okay. While you should never feel forced to hide yourself away, it's perfectly fine to choose to leave your source behind or just not immediately share what it is until you trust someone. The concept of boundaries leads us to our last point on how to navigate fandom as an antagonist victim. It's something that affects all victims. When you're from a source that is fictional in this world, there's going to be a lot of people interacting with that source who might say things, headcanon things, or create things that you find uncomfortable or untrue. We understand the discomfort. It can be difficult seeing people engage with your source in ways that feel wrong. You may even have a reaction of, hey, this is my life, this is me, why are you doing these things? But unless someone knows your system and knows you exist and is doing it specifically and purposely to hurt you, you have to remember that the majority of these people, it's purely fictional and it's like playing with Barbie dolls. It's not anything they're doing to personally hurt you. And some of the people in the fandom might even be fictives themselves who are expressing their own personal experiences. The best thing you can do if you run into something that you don't like is to block it, mute it, whatever, and carry on. There are also features within most social media sites or add-ons you can get where you can filter out things you might not want to see. It's worth looking into these tools if you're sensitive about certain tropes, certain pairings, if you don't like specific artists or writers, that sort of thing. You can also get friends that you trust to help you. Specify what you're looking for and what you absolutely don't want to see. Let them go look for things that you might like. Um, ask in community tags or in fandom related forums, servers, etc. Most fans will be happy to help you find what you're looking for and avoid the things that you don't like. If you do engage 
with fandom, seek out the stuff you do like. If you find yourself getting too upset with it, it's okay to step back and just disengage. It's better to completely ignore it than to hurt yourself and or go off on an innocent person who's just having fun with something that is supposed to be fun. Harassment is currently a huge problem within fandom spaces. It's wise to keep in mind in order to avoid either getting caught up in it or enabling it. Your experience here in this world doesn't have to be a negative one. And that's the message that we want you to take away from this. You can have a full, happy life, whether it's learning to survive your own internal struggles, conflict within the system, or potential conflicts with people outside the system. You can handle it. There are lots of tools you can learn to use to build a safe, good future for yourself. With communication skills, ways to cope with stress, and learning how to both respect and establish boundaries and enforce yours in healthy ways, you can reduce a lot of the common pitfalls antagonist victims run into. And by learning to work together with your system members, you can build a strong support system who will have your back if you need it. Thank you for listening to our presentation. If you have any questions or would like to have a civil discussion, we can be reached at the Lunastis Co. on Twitter. We wish everyone listening an amazing day. Stay safe and happy Plural Pride.